Hello my friends, welcome back. And if you're new here, I'm Jim, thanks for stopping by. I make tutorial videos here every week showing you tips, tricks, how-tos, things like that to make beautiful, interesting, or dramatic photos. Today, dramatic is the category and I'm in Luminar Neo. And if you take a look at my base photo, which is right here. This was shot along Cannon Beach in Oregon a while back, and it has all the elements of a potentially dramatic photo. But as you can see, as a raw file, it's kind of flat, it's kind of washed out. There's potential for drama, like I said, with clouds and things like that. But I end up going through making some edits, including using some filters and tools that I don't really use that you might find interesting. And I take the photo from this to that. Let me walk through that and let's get started. So my first move is to revert to the original. And there we go. Now I'm back to develop raw. And the first thing I do is of course, just uh, making some basic changes here. Okay, those basic changes included a few adjustments here in light and a little bit in color with the temperature being reduced and slight bump in vibrance. If you look at the before and the after, it's really not a massive difference, but for me, Develop Raw is setting the stage. Next, because I'm working on light, and one of the key elements, I think, in creating drama in a photo is making sure that the light really pops. For me, that means go to super contrast. So here, I went into about 41 in highlights, something similar in midtones, and then shadows uh, just a little bit more. But for me, the magic and some of the power of super contrast comes from making the balance slider adjustment. So I reduced it in highlights balance. I slightly increased it there in the midtones, and I'm going to increase it a little bit more in shadows. And you can see what that's doing. And like I said, for me, part of the drama of a photo is the difference in the light, which of course is contrast, which is why I'm in super contrast. So there it is before and there it is after. You can see it's a little bit more dramatic. So we're getting there, but I got a lot of simple and powerful moves to go. Next up is landscape, and I go to golden hour, and I actually go to 50, which is quite a bit uh, higher, I think, than you might expect me to go. But if you look at the before and the after, it gives a nice little bit of warmth, especially to that sand over there, and I like that quite a bit. Now next up are two tools that I don't use a lot, but Atmosphere AI, Love this tool, comes in really handy here with layered fog. So I'm gonna take that reasonably high, like a 48 or 49. I'm gonna leave the depth at 20, but I'm gonna pull the lightness down a little bit. In other words, I'm gonna make it not quite as bright as the default setting. So Atmosphere AI, if you look at that thin strip along the horizon, that is Cannon Beach, and Haystack Rock is that big monolith down there. But if you look along the edge there with the kind of the hills or mountains and Haystack Rock, there it is before the Atmosphere AI, and there it is after. So I've taken that layered fog and created an additional amount of it and it kind of blends in nicely to the highlight areas of the sky so there it is before and there it is after also if you notice it masks some of the blue that's in the sky and i don't want a really colorful image i'm going for drama not over the top color so i think this tool has helped quite a bit and while I'm in the creative category, I'm going on to mystical, which I love, and it just does so many nice things with the light. I go to about a 47 on the amount, and I lift the shadows to also about a 48. So if you look at the before and the after, it does create a little bit of contrast, which makes the highlights even higher, but it also creates a little bit of soft, kind of smooth, I like to call it romantic lighting, and I often use this in evening shots in cities, but I think it looks really nice on a landscape. There it is before, and there it is now. Now, a lot of what I've done has been all about the light, but I don't want to just play with light. When I'm creating a dramatic photo, I also like to play with a structure. And in this case, I'm going to go positive structure across the entire photo simply because it adds a lot of drama. That's what I'm trying to do here. So if you look at the before and the after, massive, massive difference. Also, it pulls back a little bit of those, I don't want to call them blown highlights, but how the highlights get impacted with my mystical filter a moment ago, it's pulling back some of that and creating a little bit more kind of tension in the photo, which is what I'm trying to accentuate. So that is, I think, a good move. And then here's something I've talked about in previous videos, including that one, which is use Accent AI, but don't use it early in your edit. Use it later in your edit. So here I'm coming in with Accent AI, 
And if you look at the before and after for that tool, there it is before and there it is after. It naturally amps up a lot of different things in a photo, light, color, detail, contrast, things like that. So it comes in handy because it is enhancing what I've done to the photo. There it is before and there it is after. Also keep in mind, edits are cumulative. So you just want to be careful. I try not to go too high. Now some of these filters I'm kind of pushing the sliders because I am going for a little bit of an over the top dramatic look. But just be careful because edits are cumulative. You can always go back to the edits tab and further refine what you've done if you need to. Okay, I like all of that, but I'm not looking for a lot of color. So I'm gonna go into color, I'm gonna go into saturation, and just for the blue channel, I'm gonna pull that down to negative 25. I just wanna pull back the blue a little bit. I'm not looking for a, hey, this was a sunset time of day, but there was not a dramatic sunset there were dramatic clouds. So I don't. I wanna pull back some of the color and that blue is a little too much for me. And for me, too much color when I'm going for kind of a dramatic photo kind of gets in the way of what I consider kind of the viewer experience. They're gonna say, oh, there's a lot of color, there's a lot of drama, kind of what is it? And it can be both if you get the right conditions. This wasn't really the right conditions. This one's more about the drama, so I'm pulling back the saturation for that reason. There it is before and there it is now. Now at this point, I was really liking where I was, but here's something that I love about Luminar Neo, and that is you can go back and use tools again. In this case, I'm gonna get developed because I feel like after all those other moves, I still need to work on the light a little bit. I don't want it to be too bright. For me, if it's a really bright photo, but there's a lot of drama, it seems a little bit like a mismatch. Like to me, a dramatic photo tends to be a little bit darker. So I'm actually gonna pull down the overall exposure, which is why I love this in Luminar Neo. You can go back and use a tool again and again. I'm gonna add a little bit of smart contrast, just kind of bumping that up a little bit. And of course, I'm gonna pull the highlights down a fair amount, like a negative 60 or so. And this has given me a lot of control over that light. There it is before. I mean, it's a massive difference, to be honest. There it is before, and there it is now darken the overall photo, which I like. I actually might do a little bit more contrast. Now look, if you drag the contrast, you get back some of that highlights. Remember, contrast is the difference between bright and dark. So the dark gets darker, the bright gets brighter. I went really low here. I think I was at a seven. I actually might move that up a little bit and maybe to go to about a 15. But I've got another move I'm gonna do here in a minute, which is gonna pull back some of the light but I only wanna pull it back in a couple, or really one key area, which is the center of the photo. There's an easy move, you're probably guessing what it is. I'm gonna do that here in a second. But there it is before this second use of develop, and there it is now. I like that a little bit more than I did before, and in fact, I might pull back a tiny bit on the exposure reduction, maybe make that a negative like 0.3 or so instead of a 0.4. But one more time, there it is before, Dramatic, nice clouds, a lot of structure, a lot of texture in the image, but too bright. Now, that definitely looks a bit moodier. Now, you may be wondering, hey, Jim, there's a tool called Dramatic, and you're talking, you've, Jim, you've used the word drama so many times. How come you didn't use the Dramatic tool? Well, I am now. So let me go ahead and get over here. This is one of my finishing touches. There it is. I'm just gonna go at about a 20, because again, if you look at the before and after, it's brightening and adding drama to the image. So I already brightened it early in the edit and then I went and darkened it a little bit. So this is part of what I like to call the delicate dance. There's never a linear straight line. Do this, get that result for me at least. My editing path is a meandering path. I'm not in a hurry. I don't wanna spend hours on it, but I wanna get what I wanna get. And sometimes I kinda of go and do one thing and then go and do something that's kind of the opposite. So I did some brightening with various tools. I came in and darkened it a little bit with develop. Dramatic brings a little bit of punch back to the image. It's only a 20, but if you look at the before and the after, it does exactly what the filter says it does. It adds a little bit of drama. But it's also because if you notice, it's basically adding some contrast. It's slightly brightening those highlights. I think that's working well for the feeling I'm going for in this image. And of course, the tool I referred to a moment ago about adding back a little bit of light is the vignette tool. So what I wanna do here is basically 
pull a you know basically a negative amount and my size is going to be about you know 39 or 40. I tend to go a little rounder on, on vignettes. I'm going to go about 72 here, something about like that. My feathering is going to 100. And here's the thing, choosing subject I think is key because if I add inner light, which I'm definitely going to do, it basically puts it by default in the center of the image because the vignette defaults to the center of the image. I don't want it in the center of the image. The subject of the image, Haystack Rock, is lower center. So I'm going to choose subject and instead of being up there, I want to put the center of the vignette down here. You can see how that impacts the image. I still got a nice section here kind of in the kind of in the center just above the horizon that's still plenty light, but the clouds up here in the higher part of the sky have been darkened a little bit because of the vignette. So consider placing the subject somewhere else other than the center of the image. I mean, you can just move it anywhere, right? Until you've clicked choose subject again, you can move this all around and do whatever you want to do. And it's frankly worth experimenting. I tend to not put it right on top of my subject. I tend to drop it a little bit below. It's just kind of a habit I've gotten into. I like the subject to be placed there and then you know experiment further with inner light if you want to and in fact experiment with all the settings if you like to i like it kind of like that but if you look at the before the vignette seems a little dark in the center doesn't it and um, obviously not quite as dark around the edges and there you go i think that adds a little bit of drama because the overall look now is almost as though there's light emanating from kind of in the horizon behind Haystack Rock, way in the distance, and the clouds are kind of, you know, flowing or um, kind of streaming out from there and that direction, kind of parting almost, um, both to my left and to my right, and it's almost as if I'm standing in the center of the uh, storm, for lack of a better word, and capturing it as it passes over me. So that is my edit. Let me show you the before and after. That gives you a lot of ideas ideas and lots of tips, but if you like this, check out that video. And I actually, in that video, edited a photo from nearly the exact same location at almost the same time, looking the other direction, where I also amped up some drama in that storm photograph, but I did some different things. So there's different ways to do this. Check out that video if you enjoyed this one. And that's it for today's video, my friends. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. You guys take care of yourselves and adios.